And I may be wrong, but I think Extol just cornered the market with this laser machine. This is the S1 laser cutter and engraver from Extol, the world's first 40 watt enclosed diode laser. In this video, we are going to look at all the crazy features this machine has to offer as well as run through some really fun projects. And I'm warning you now, if you watch this video, you may want one of these. When I first unboxed this laser, I did a full inspection to see if I caught anything I disliked. I was pleased with the premium build quality and the fact that I didn't have to put anything together other than attaching the 40 watt diode module and removing two safety stop brackets. I would consider the S1 to be somewhat portable. It weighs only 44 pounds and the dimensions are 30 by 22 by 18 inches. The engraving area is 19.6 by 12.5 inches with the 40 watt diode module. The biggest selling points of this machine, I think are the safety and features that Xtool put into a diode laser. Let's briefly cover these before getting to our testing and tutorial. The S1 has interchangeable laser modules. You can interchange between a 40 and 20 watt blue diode and a two watt infrared diode. I think this gives us a lot of flexibility in pricing and creative opportunity with this machine. Xtol claims the S1 has more stable performance even while running at 600 millimeters a second. Although it's not the fastest among open diode laser cutters, they do claim it delivers better results than other open diode lasers. The next is the new twin point positioning with dynamic autofocus. Now this is a lot to explain, but it works simple. This works by using a probe that touches the material, then homes in on the reset focus point to set the focus and can position in more than one spot on the material to determine the processing range. This new method gives more accuracy than the camera Camera, supports curved surface engraving and provides real-time feedback in creative space. The S1 can also accommodate optional accessories like the air assist which plugs directly into the back of the machine. There is also a smoke purifier, a riser base which is used for processing large materials, a fire safety set and the conveyor feeder for long materials. Now apart from these main features, let's look at what Xtool did safety wise. Number one, obviously it's enclosed. You don't have to wear laser glasses or buy an extra enclosure for the smoke. The green tinted lid protects your eyes by blocking the harmful rays emitted from the diode while the smoke exhaust pulls out the fumes. I know this feature is going to be huge with a lot of people who are looking at diode units. Number two, it has a five direction flame detection that will stop the laser in the event of a fire. Number three, there is a lid open safety stop that will halt the laser from working if the lid is raised. Number four, a built in tilt and impact function that will halt the laser operation if the S1 is tilted or heavily bumped. And finally, number five, an emergency stop button on the side. Having all these features in one diode laser unit is pretty dang awesome and it may seal the deal for a lot of you. But so you know what you are getting yourselves into with this laser, let me briefly run you through creative space with this first project, then we will run through other projects at a faster pace. I'm sure this will clear up any questions that you may have. Let's take a simple look and see how this operates. I am going to run a test file on this piece of basswood. And as I pull this laser module down, you can see the red crosshairs. Now look on my computer screen. This is Xtool's Creative Space software. When I move this laser module, you can see that the change is being reflected on the screen. And so this is telling us where we are at in 3D space. So I am going to move this to the top left hand corner. And now I am going to click the autofocus button. This probe is going to drop down and click on the wood. Then it's going to come over here and reset. And this is going to tell the S1 how thick the material is that we are engraving. Now let's run a test file. You see the red crosshairs here? We are going to take this engraving file and move it over. And I think that is going to do it. Now let's click frame. Now as I hit this button here, watch what happens. This is going to frame the outline of the test file. Let's run this. Okay guys, we are running the S1 live for the camera and I want to point something out. We have the air assist blowing full blast, the smoke purifier behind the laser running full blast, and as far as the noise levels, it's not that bad. 
I feel that the open diode units make a little bit more noise. And as far as the P2 CO2 laser from Nextool, it makes more noise than this, I believe. So this is actually a pretty quiet laser. I can already tell you from looking at this that this diode module is going to make clean and accurate engravings. If you would like to download this test file, I will link it up in the links below. Be sure to run this on any project beforehand. So what we are going to do here is to move this, I'd say, right about there. And, I, and I don't, I'm not sure if you can see the arrow there. So now that we got that, we are going to click the power button on the front of the S1. And it's marked. Now for Vertex 2, we are going to move this and click the power button again. And now it is completely done. And what you will see here is a little box. And this is the complete processing area. How cool is this? So we want to make sure everything fits in this box. And look here. This just engraved inside of the processing area that we told it to. The advantages of using this is that it is crazy accurate. There's no more guesswork or messing up. Now we are going to add the riser base. This is going to be used for the rest of the video. And I really like this accessory because I can get some pretty big objects in the engraving bed. For the second engraving, I wanted to engrave a 3D picture of a wolf. And this is like my third try on this. I did a few smaller test pieces. For no more time than I spent on the settings, I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. I know a lot of people like to engrave family portraits and put it up in their home, so the possibilities are really awesome with this. I'm also liking the accuracy. That looks really good. For this next project, I am cutting this three millimeter piece of basswood. This is a Thanksgiving ornament that I downloaded from Etsy. And as expected, this 40 watt is just powering through it. After this completed, I took some paint markers, painted it up, and you can see it right here. I mean, this is simple, guys. I mean, I'm not spending a lot of time with this, but people take these, they sell them, and I know my mom's gonna like to put this up somewhere because she likes, I could make something horrible and she would put it up. So anyway, turned out pretty cool. Now we are going to use the optional RA2 Pro rotary attachment to engrave a tumbler. In order to do this, you will need the riser base. So we are going to put the riser base on the very bottom level and this should fit in perfect. For this tumbler engraving, I downloaded a file from Etsy to do a full wrap around. This is the first time I have done this type of engraving. Now I got my cup off size just a little bit, but then I realized that the SVG file that I downloaded had a corruption in it. So I let this thing run on and it just, uh, it got messed up to say the least. I spent a lot of time on this, but the part that did engrave correctly, I mean, it looks great. Look at that. As you go around here, you can see where the letters get off and everything else. But the S1 didn't do anything wrong. That was the files problem after I did some troubleshooting, but the rotary attachment is working flawlessly. Now let's engrave this leather EDC pocket organizer. This works by putting your everyday carry items like knives, or flashlights in. So my pride got the best of me. I wanted to try the patriotic image out again, so I got the PNG version instead, and it did great. Now, another user error on mine, I'm not gonna hide my mistakes from you guys, I was running this laser way too fast for the leather. It looks nice, it engraved accurate, but it is a little light in some areas. I did the front and back, and as I'm looking at the small lettering on here from an angle, this thing is crazy accurate. I just can't get over that. That is amazing for a big 40 watt diode. For this next part, I am engraving three millimeter orange acrylic. Now, uh, dummy me, I forgot to set the focus point and turn on the air assist. And I went ahead and just scrapped this because I forgot to focus my laser. So I started a new piece, everything went great. Now I should have lowered the speed a little bit 
Some parts of it cut all the way through, other parts didn't. And that's because orange is a very light material. So if this would have been black, it would have cut through it at one pass. So I did another pass, which I should have done at less power. But other than my error on this, I think it turned out great and it cut this out flawlessly. Okay guys, let's cut through this piece of wood. I'm not sure what kind of species this is, but it is around 9.6 millimeters. I know it's not the thickest, but let's see how this performs. Okay, that was at 16 millimeters a second speed and we got a little over halfway. So I think I am going to drop this to about eight and see what happens. Wow. Guys, look at the smoke. Guys, that, well, that was it. After the second run, I picked this up and bent it a little bit and it snapped right in two. And guys, this was 100% power at eight millimeters a second speed. So I know this is not the thickest material. Uh, I don't wanna go any thicker than this. I know the 40 watt can handle it, but uh, yeah, the, the power of this machine is just crazy. I don't see anyone needing any more than this really, uh, but man, look how clean that cut is. I am highly impressed. From here, I did a few more images on bamboo wood, and this is one of my favorites. This turned out perfect. And guys, this was 100% power at 600 millimeter speed. Look how perfect and clean that is. That is amazing. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but uh, man, that's so cool, and I love that design. I also wanna show you guys this other engraving. You can see the right side here is a lot lighter and that's because there is a discrepancy in the wood. Not all wood is created equal. Sometimes you will have problems like this. But as far as the S1, I couldn't be happier. 600 millimeters a second with 100% power, man, it's stable. Let's engrave a curved surface and I'm briefly going to show you how this worked. On Creative Space, if you click over here where it says laser flat, you can click on curve process. Now what we are going to do is to take these crosshairs and basically measure from one part of the spoon to the other in a diagonal line. So if we hit here on curved measure, we can see vertex one and vertex two and that we need a diagonal line. So I am going to put this probably right about there. And I am going to click mark. When I do this, I'm holding the spoon, that way it doesn't slip. And the twin point positioning is going to reset there. And now for vertex two, I'm going to click down and click over, and I guess I can just move this. That'd be a little bit smarter. I'm going, going to get it right on the edge. I'm going to be very careful and just hold the spoon down. You necessarily don't have to do this, but I just want to make sure that this doesn't move. On this screen, it's going to measure all these points, so I'm going to click Start Measuring. And I'm going to hold this just in case. I don't think it's going to move it, but since this wood is very slippery, it may move it over, and I don't want to take a chance. You can see here we have a 3D model, so everything inside of this box can be engraved. I am going to do a just simple text. There we go, I'm gonna put the power, the speed on 30, and the power, let's go with 20. I forgot to hit the record button on the camera as well as turn the air assist and smoke purifier on, but that looks great. I could have set the focus point a little further out and extended the letters down and it would have worked great. But I think you guys get the idea. I wanna show you something basic here so you can grasp the concept, but I'm happy. 
I wanted to do one more test with the conveyor feeder attachment, but I am not able to simply because I have a deadline for this video and I do not have the material on hand to do so. Now, if you look right here, this is another video of mine when I reviewed the P2CO2 laser, and you can see how the conveyor feeder works with the riser base here. It just took this piece of hickory board, and I just did a simple design on here with my name, and you can see how it works. So if you would like to look at that in depth, you can go to that video, and it will be very similar to using that with the S1. I want to talk about the power for a second. There is one thing that we didn't show, and that is the full cutting potential of this 40 watt diode. This can cut through 20 millimeters of pine board in one pass. That is insane, but it, it's not practical. You don't need to cut anything that thick. The 40 watt will be great at cutting thick material and general engraving, a basic workhorse. The 20 watt is a good middle of the road and picking up the two watt infrared diode will complete the kit and be great for engraving on metal, plastic, acrylic, and similar materials. And if I have to think about it, what I enjoy most about this laser is the fact that I can drop material in the bed close the lid, hit autofocus, and begin engraving without glasses. I feel out of all the Extel lasers that I have used, this is the most simple to use. With the safety that the S1 provides, the ease of use, and how accurate the engravings are, I highly recommend this laser to anyone new to laser engraving or looking to upgrade. As far as pricing, the standalone 20 watt S1 is $15.99. The standalone 40 watt S1 is $19.99. And Extel is currently running a promo. So if you order any one of these two machines from October 18th through November 2nd, you will receive a free air assist and honeycomb grid. So keep a check here for the best price. As far as the infrared module, it is $5.99 and sold separate. So you will need the 40 watt or 20 watt S1 base to use it. So if you are in the market for a laser and this checks off what you need, this would be a great time to buy. For the price and features that this packs in, I know many people will be looking into it. So if you would like to check out this S1 laser engraver, you can find it in the links below. These are affiliate links, so I will get a small kickback from any purchases made through them. This helps support my channel at no extra cost to you, and I can't thank you guys enough for your support. And I want to encourage you guys, so many people are picking up laser engravers and starting businesses. It is such a lucrative opportunity. I personally make money with my lasers, but I love just having one for the creative freedom that it provides. If you have been playing around with the idea, I promise you they are a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Post any questions you have in the comments below. Hit that like button and I will talk to you later guys. I appreciate you so much.